this goddamn post-apocalyptic motherfucking world. So yeah, fucking talking about some post-apocalyptic black thrash fucking metal. Fucking Lord motherfucking humongous. So God, I've been waiting for this motherfucking uh, full length to come out. I've talked about it before. You know, they they had this uh, cassette single, which is very cool. I've talked about this before. White Line Fever. They also did another uh, single, uh, Toe Cutter. Toe Cutter from fucking Mad Max. Yeah, you know what the fuck is up. But yeah, this is fucking good shit, man. Um, great, just black and thrash metal. <laughs> What I like about this, many things about it. Of course, I love the fucking overall look to the band. I mean, they they have, they look metal as fuck, okay? Metal as fuck. That's what I want to see. So they have the look, but they got the sound too. You know, these uh, the cassette single was just a little uh, teaser for me, but man, once I got the album, listened to it, such good fucking tracks. Solid fucking thrash. It's funny when I first listened to it, I first thought, okay, it's fucking black metal thrashy kind of shit. They also do a fucking uh, goat penis cover version of their own. They changed the title a little bit, though. They called it Captain Walker, which if you know Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, that's a reference to that movie. Fucking worst one of the... Mad Max series, but, but yeah, um, I first listened to it, I fucking blew me away, it opens up, you know, the first track, uh, don't, there's a, actually an instrumental, Greetings from Humongous, a clip from the Road Warrior, Mad Max Part 2, where they're talking about Humongous, and then it goes right into the song, Just Walk Away, and if anybody remembers, God damn the Road Warrior, remember Humongous on their, Just Walk Away, fucking great clip, I mean, Overall, the music is just really fucking solid, thrashy. Some some blast parts are mostly just classic thrash. And my first thought was black thrash, but I let a lot of other people around my circle listen to it. And their first thought was it reminded them of a uh, a Razorback Records band, like the old, well, older, not real old, but Razorback Records, like Ghoul, Frightmare, and stuff like that, like death metally thrash. And I was like, actually, that's a pretty fucking good good uh, experience explanation of it, you know, description of it, because it does remind me of that, that uh, kind of a ghoul sound, but again, not just like ghoul, though, they have their own sound, they play good black thrash metal, but very fucking catchy, um, this is on the Gems label, J-E-M-S, Gems label, they mostly put out cassettes, but I hear that they're also coming out with a 12-inch version of this, which is needed, look at that fucking artwork, I mean, that is gonna look fucking great on a 12-inch not a 12 inch, a 12 inch fucking uh, piece of vinyl. More of uh, pictures from the uh, Road Warrior. I am not a god, I am the man. God, the death is below. It's not a spirit with a decay. I said, I'm on. So I fucking love it, man. This band gets it, too. They do good uh, merchandising. Like with us, the way, way we do stuff, and other bands, too. When I get something from somebody, I want some fucking merch and some cool shit. You know, they got cool patches here. Look at that. Fucking looks like some war metal, fucking black metal killing machine right there. Also, a nice little larger patch here. And then I got the fucking long sleeve shirt on right here. Got this shit on the side and there's some shit on the back at War With Peace. So I'm all about this shit. They're from uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And also what I like too, they're some old fucks. You know, they're not some young fucking pussies. They, they've been around. You know, they know what's going on. They get it. So great musicianship. Older motherfuckers. has been around. They know what's going on. They've been starting to play some live shows too. And you look at that shit. They got fucking, they're like, they got gear on like they're ready to go to the fucking post-apocalyptic wasteland and start fucking hunting for Mad Max.
That's what the fuck I want to see. You know, got cool shit, cool stickers and stuff, scary ass motherfuckers. Besides this shirt, check out this other goddamn shirt. Nice ass designs from the uh, cassette cover. Put this on, splatter some fucking blood all over it. Very fucking cool shit. Oh, also this too. Nice fucking metal pen. You see, they go all out. And somebody might think, oh, they're trying to be like Kiss and merchandise. Well, fuck it. I, I, I like that kind of shit. I don't look at it like it's some sellout shit or whatever. If there's a band I like and they look cool, I want to get all their shit. And they got a fucking band camp that has all that shit on there. The CD and you can do digital download crap if you want. But they got all the fucking shirts and stuff and CD and whatnot. You need to get your fucking ass on there and order that goddamn shit. And actually, the uh, tyrant himself, later this week, we're going to have an interview with him. Right here on fucking Morton Red Channel, goddammit! And you think he's going to do an interview with a fucking hat on backwards and t-shirt and look, yeah, man, this fucking this shit's dope. Talk, no. He's going to be ready for the fucking post-apocalyptic fucking wasteland. I guarantee you. So you check out the interview. It's fucking going to be good. That motherfucker's going to be ducked out. And uh, we're going to talk about... You know, the interview's already recorded. We already did it, so I know it's fucking good. We talked about fucking the Mad Max series and whatnot. And and actually, after even after I did the fucking interview with him, I had to go back and rewatch all that shit. Because, you know, in 81, I first saw Mad Max at the theater. And I'm sorry, Road Warrior at the theater. And at the time, when it came out, it was just called The Road Warrior. Nobody knew what Mad Max was. I didn't even know it was a, a sequel until probably two years later, I saw... When B the VHS rental started getting popular, and I saw Mad Max and watched it then and realized, okay, these are two we go hand in hand. Both those are fucking fantastic movies. And also Road Warrior, Lord Humongous, the character, fucking hockey mask on there. This came out in 1981, so fucking two years before Jason Voorhees got his fucking hockey mask on Friday the 13th Part 3. He got it from fucking fat-ass Shelly. All you horror movie motherfuckers, you know what I'm talking about. But, uh... 1981, humongous, he had his hockey mask, and then also 1982, Alone in the Dark, I talked about this movie too, slasher, psycho killer movie, motherfucker, the bleeder has a, a hockey mask on there too, so there was two movies out, use a hockey mask in prominence before Friday the 13th, but of course Friday the 13th made the fucking, made the most popular of it, I guess, if you will. And then you got a few years later, 1985, fucking Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome comes out. So me as a kid, I came out, man, and they made a big hoopla about it. Tina Turner was going to be in it. They had a fucking movie magazine. I bought it when it came out. And I went to the theater, and I just couldn't believe it was fucking trash. I, I, even as a kid watching this, when I saw the theater, and I was so fucking disappointed. I went all this fucking light, happy shit with these fucking kids and stuff. It fucking ruined it. Probably the first part of the movie when they were in Thunderdome is okay. But once he, they got uh, banished and sent out in the fucking desert after the battle at uh, uh, Thunderdome, those little fucking kids and Captain Walker, those little fucking motherfuckers uh, making these noises, fucking ruined it, ruined the goddamn thing. But interesting, though, when I talked to the fucking tyrant from uh, Lord Humongous, we talk about this. Uh, I did, he as well learned about uh, Rose Tattoo from... Uh, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, because I remember getting the movie magazine and seeing the character Iron Bar, who was Angry Anderson, I said, oh, he's in a band called uh, Rose Tattoo, and then a few years later, I fucking bought the record, and right now, I fucking love Rose Tattoo, one of my favorite fucking rock and roll bands, whatever, but that's when I first heard heard of them, probably that's where a lot of people in America first discovered Rose Tattoo from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, anyway, I'm getting off the fucking topic, Mad Max, check it out later this week, fucking interview with Lord Humongous, the fucking thrash metal fucking black evil, check this shit out, god damn it, the fucking end of the world! <laughs>